Everybody, hello, I'm David Nabarro, and I am going to have a wonderful time over the next two hours, because this is a special moment. In preparation for Abahir the piece. and a David Nabarro. Hello. hello. Yeah. Uh, in preparation for the summit, uh, what and we have we is a, a, a number of dialogues that are being organized around the world. Uh, there are national dialogues, there are independent dialogues, and there are global dialogues. And this is a very special global dialogue that's been brought into the schedule, actually very much at the request of producer organizations. I'm acting on behalf of all food producers who've come together for this dialogue event uh, to be your dialogue curator. So let me just tell you a little bit more about it. Under the leadership of Dr. Agnes Calabata, the special envoy for the Food System Summit, who is with us today, the World Farmers Organization, the Pan-African Farmers Organization, the Southern African Confederation of Agriculture, the Asian Farmers Association, Sustainable Rural Development, and Arad Tishak Samaj, which is the Farmers Forum of India, have all come together to be co-conveners of this dialogue. I see the leaders of many of these organizations are here with us today. And I want to say straight away, as your curator, it is a privilege to be joined by them all. These are farmers who are really taking the trouble to reach out to others and to help everybody understand just what is involved in being a farmer in 2021 in the midst of COVID, in the midst of a number of other challenges, and how important it is that as we look at the future of food, we take account of farmer interests. And so today, we're actually building on some key outcomes of a series of independent dialogues among producers at national level, at regional level, that's several countries together, and globally and we've really got i i believe such a strong representation of conveners and others from different countries as well as civil society businesses scientific groups and academics as well as consumer organizations in our dialogue today it's just wonderful that we've got this diversity Interpretation, as you've gathered, is currently available in Arabic, Chinese, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And everybody, we're being live streamed on the UN Food System Summit Facebook page. Let me just show you the agenda of today. Before we go into the plenary session, uh, I want to highlight that a key part of today's dialogue will actually be the breakout sessions that we have. And so it, it's perhaps quite important that we talk a little bit about what will happen in the breakouts. They're designed to create a multi-stakeholder environment uh, in, in which it'll be possible for different stakeholders to examine the challenges, contributions, responsibilities and expectations of farmers, fishers, pastoralists, and others in transforming our food systems. So we look at the producer producers as a community, and we're thinking challenges, contributions, responsibilities, and expectations. And we really do hope that this global dialogue will enable the different perspectives and views of farmers on complex and multifaceted issues can really come to the fore. Because if we get these different 
perspectives and views by connecting groups of farmers together, by exploring options, and by considering synergies, choices, and trade-offs, we can better advance together on different issues as they affect the sectors in which we're involved. Quite simply, talking makes it easier for us to shift together. And that's why we're expecting through the dialogue today, consensus as well as divergence, with the aim of identifying common ground that can then lead to commitments that put producers at the center of food systems transformation. So without further ado, please allow me to hand the floor to Dr. Agnes Calabata, the special envoy for the Food Systems Summit to deliver her opening remarks. Dr. Calabata, you have the floor. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Very good. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you for those introductory remarks. I'm really, really happy to be here with you all. I'm very delighted in the first place to be co-hosting this meeting with uh, um, this Global Producers Dialogue with the World Farmers Organization, PAFO, SACAO, and AFA, and the Farmers Forum of, of India. Uh, we came to this summit, I personally came to this summit really excited about what we might be able to learn from producers. What type of voice would we be able to give to producers? And I hope that we have provided an opportunity to listen to farmers, to fishers, to herdsmen and women, to pastoralists, to people that are involved in production systems across our food system everywhere around the world. I see that uh, we have, we started out by providing space. We wanted to make sure that uh, you feel involved and we provided space all the way from the advisory committee of the, of the forum. We engaged a number of you in the champions network. We ensured that you're represented in action tracks and we ensured that a number of dialogues are available both at member state level, but also uh, in your independent dialogues. I know you've had over 50 of these type of independent dialogues. And the whole reason behind all this was to ensure we give voice, give voice to farmers, give voice to fishers, give voice to pastoralists, give voice to herders, give voice to you all that are looking to be able to, uh, looking to be part of the Food system Summit, because you represent a huge part of what we do. Uh, Tio always refers to producers as businesses. You know, uh, a lot of people refer to them as farmers, as uh, fishers, but no, these are actually businesses. You, what you do is you do business. You're in this because it's a business for you. It's a business for your family. You're looking, it's your livelihood. And we need to understand, the world needs to understand the power of these businesses to not just feed us, but also to maintain our world and to keep our world going. So that's why I have said that during these dialogues, you really have a powerful opportunity to really be able to bring together and to get us to listen to how you see yourselves, to what you put on the table. Some people sometimes look at, you know, producers are doing this, producers are doing that. No, <laughs> producers are feeding us. That's the only thing I know. They're not doing anything wrong, they're feeding us. If anything is not happening as we would like to see happen, it's because producers are not equipped to do the, the, their work the way they should be doing it. I hope that by the time we finish with this summit, that we are in agreement around what producers need to be equipped to do a good job. A good job in feeding us, a good job in looking after our world, and a good job in really ensuring that our planet can grow and be part of the future of where we are going. Producers have this capability. They are often constrained. We need to remove these constraints to ensure that they can do a good job. So that's why we always talk about, you know, when as we come to the summit as producers, 
and I call myself that the producer, producer's daughter. As we come to the summit as producers, let's come with our heads high, talking about what we are able to do for this world. This world will not be there without producers. Us, at least the people of this world, wouldn't be there without producers. So come with your heads high. I think this is going to be one of the last meetings towards the, the pre-summit. Come to the pre-summit with your heads high, being able to really call out what you represent to the world. Being able to really call out what you need that all of us to do to make your work easy, but also being able to call out what you see is not acceptable. You use the land more than anybody. You use the resources, the water, the, you know, all these resources that God has given us. You know what you don't want to be to see happen. You need to call it out. You need to tell us to stop doing some of the things that are dis destroying some of these resources that God has given us. So I hope that as we go into the pre-summit uh, and, and later the summit, that we really bring out the diversity that is in us in terms of what we get to do together to, uh, to really ensure that our food systems continue to be, to be diverse, that our production systems, as diverse as they are, we do provide space for each other. We have done so in, this, in these uh, dialogues. We have really provided space in terms of listening to each other. Let's maintain that diversity in our production systems and let's maintain that diversity in our collaboration so that we ensure we have the right level of food systems. So me, I go into the pre-summit really excited and looking forward to the conversation that you bring to the pre-summit. And I really uh, hope that this is going to be a turning point for, for us, the way we feed ourselves, but also for how we look after our planet, our planet and for how we talk about producers in our food systems. So thank you, David, for giving me this opportunity. I'm looking forward to these conversations. I'm looking forward to how we bring this conversation home. Thank you again. Very cool. John, that was super inspiring, Dr. Kalabata. Thank you very, very much indeed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this global dialogue builds on a series of producer dialogues that have been organized independently around the world. Fabulous uh, what's been going on. And in fact, the whole uh, producer dialogue process just concluded last Friday with a great session involving the World Farmers Organization, the Pan-African Farmers Organization and the Asian Farmers Association. So it's with enormous delight that I would now like to welcome representatives from these producer organizations to share their key outcomes, which will form the basis of our breakouts later today. Uh, I've been a bit slow with the timing so far. It's now uh, 12, uh, 17 on my watch. Uh, and I want to be very fair to our farmer representatives. So you will each get five minutes uh, to make your presentations as was in the original program. I will actually warn you uh, just as you get to the end of your five minutes. Uh, uh, I'd like to give first the microphone to Elizabeth Simadala, the uh, president of the Pan American Pan African Farmers Organization, to be followed by Estrella Panunia from the Asian Farmers Association, and then Tio Diego, president of the World Farmers Organization. I won't introduce you again. I will just take lift it from one speaker to the next for ease of uh, of communication. So, Elizabeth. Uh, Simadala, would you like to start now, please? Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, David. And um, good morning to everyone. I hope my connection is better. So um, it's always uh, a pleasure to have you, David, as uh, part of the farmers uh, support system. And again, I, I appreciate um, you for accepting to curate uh, today's dialogue. So distinguished excellencies, uh, fellow co-conveners, Dr. Agnes Kalibat, the UN Food System Special Envoy, First Organization, uh, AFA, India, Sakao, producers and friends of uh, farmers, wherever you're connected from. I bring you greetings from the Pan-Africa Farmers Organization leadership, the secretariat and the membership. 
So it's very exciting for me to join producers globally to speak about food systems transformation, which in my view is the DNA of the farmers. And it's the main reason that the Pan-Africa Farmers Organization joined other actors to engage in the summit process, to be able to bring farmers contributions towards a health food system. And this could only be done through sharing our views for the needed change for sustainable food systems. So many, many thanks to my colleagues, the co-conveners of this global dialogue on farmers, fishers, pastoralists, and other producers. In an effort to ensure that this is not only a people's summit, but also a solution summit where no one is left behind, I wish to thank the UNFSS Secretariat and IFAD for the financial support and the technical support to the producer organizations independent dialogues, which have happened at, uh, at different levels, but also continue to, to happen in, um, in other um, uh, uh, countries. So excellencies and participants, uh, just to bring you up to speed, uh, Pan-Africa Farmers Organization as a continental body of uh, producer organizations with a footprint in almost 50 countries, with over 80 national farmer level uh, organizations representing over 80 million smallholder farmers. And through our five regional networks, we were able to convene independent dialogues at different levels, national, regional, and continental, to be able to engage directly African producers and ensure that their views around the continent are heard and represented. And uh, to make sure that um, we are present at the pre-summit and the uh, summit with the position of the farmers. Uh, this again was also done to make sure that we equally propose uh, pathways uh, towards sustainable food systems. So in these dialogues, we were able to reach out directly to over a thousand farmers with more millions reached out indirectly. And these numbers do not include the other dialogues held with other partners. For example, as Puffer, we've had uh, uh, dialogues with, um, with, with AU, with NEPAD, uh, with uh, with FARA, with you know other partners, and also uh, they don't uh, include our representation in the different uh, summit processes, as already mentioned by um, by the special envoy, like the advisory committee, the champion networks, the action tracks, and other spaces. And just last week, we also had our first ever global producers dialogue, co-convened by PAFO. Uh, World Farmers Organization and AFA. This attracted global participants from all sectors. The, in fact, the development partners also uh, took part in our dialogue, including um, the presence of the president of IFAD, the president of the Mr. Deputy and other speakers. Elizabeth, keep talking. There's a bit of interruption, but just keep going. You have a minute left. Uh, <laughs> so the dialogues uh, offered us an opportunity to discuss common priorities and divergency. And what comes out of the independent dialogues clearly points out that we cannot talk about food systems without special focus on farmers. Farmers are the backbone of food systems. We have a stake in ensuring production of quality and accessible food for all, but we are quite often always forgotten. We are already seen as part of the problem with little or nothing to offer as a solution. We have had partnerships that are for us, but not with us. We have to adhere to regulations that are negotiated by international community. The science and research is done in silos with less involvement of farmers and limited efforts are put in to make sure that information reach the farmers in the language they understand, taking cognizance of their level of education, their skills, the infrastructure, the technologies, among others. The consumers are demanding health diets that are quality and nutritious, but their prices are not rewarding to the farmers' efforts in the food systems. So the UNSF, the UN uh, Food Systems Summit 2021 comes timely at the peak of the global impact of COVID-19 and other climatic shocks, calling for concerted efforts to bring together networks to build resilience, uh, to make sure that we are inclusive, 
to build strong linkages and bridges to have a greater impact in the food system as we build forward better. So we call for farmer-faced policies and investments that are targeted to different genders, giving special attention to the disadvantaged youth, women, and people with disabilities, but also a mechanism to track the implementation of concrete actions so that the UNFSS 2021 is not just a talk show, but a commitment from all actors. As farmers and producers, we have a key role to play in ensuring that the food systems operate sustainably. De La Fa, we commit to ensure that we have a sustainable food system. In the next moment, I look forward to concrete discussions on challenges, actions, and commitments of the producers for the, for the food system and wish you all fruitful uh, discussions. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Indeed. Over to you, David. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, look, I've just written down in my notebook while you were talking. A thousand farmers part of the conversation. We're being taken seriously as food systems actors. We're not the problem. We actually are the solution. Let us into your silos, connect with us, meet us where we are. That's what I heard from you. Lots more, but I just, Elizabeth, if I'm wrong, say so, but I felt that was a beautiful statement of why the farmer must be there. Am I right? You're very right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, I mean, I'm sorry for rushing. It, it's just the, always the nature of these things. I'd like to go to Estrella Penunia, Secretary General of the Asian Farmers Association. Estrella, you have the floor now. Five minutes. Thank you, David. Pleasure to have you as curator for the Producers Summit Dialogue today. And good morning to friends in Americas, good afternoon to friends in Europe and Africa and Asia, and good evening to friends in Pacific and Oceania. We are very pleased to share with you today a consolidation of the key messages of small scale women and men, young and young at heart, family farmers, engaged in crops, livestock, fisheries, forestry, herding, and pastoralism. These key messages are the result of 11 independent dialogues in 10 countries and six regional independent dialogues in Asia Pacific. These were convened by 11 national FO members and partners and at the region with a Pacific Island Farmer Organization Network or PUIFON, who is part of the champions group of the UNFSS as well as the Asia members of the Intercontinental Network of Organic Farmers Organization or INOFO and the World Farmers Organizations or WFO with a combined participation of 1,500 individuals representing 18 million members of these farmers organizations. In our world where the hungry and poor and where those much affected by the vagaries of the climate and where the most neglected and left behind are amongst our constituencies and where the most degraded lands are amongst where we live, we are committed to contribute to healthy people and a healthy planet while bringing back the dignity for family farmers. And we have seen best practices from our co-farmers on how to make these triple wins. We sum up in three main contributions. First, agroecology through integrated biodiverse agroecological approaches in farms, fisheries, and forests, such as natural farming, organic farming, farming that integrates crops, fish, trees, and livestock, permaculture, sustainable fishing and forestry, mangrove reforestation, as well as use of indigenous trees for reforestation, community seed saving scheme, promoting indigenous yet nutritious crops, such as millet and sorghum, integrated water management, including water saving and conservation mechanisms, integrated and alternative pest management. When we use these approaches, our harvests grow, our soils become healthier, we can adapt more to our climate, our food become more diverse and nutritious, our knowledge flourish, our innovative spirit is challenged because we are called to be observant, to experiment, to reflect and learn from these practices rather than just be mere recipients and adapters of technologies. Second, cooperatives. 
through inclusive value chains that give farmers more market power, more involvement in value chain processes than mere producers or mere price takers, such as farmers associations, companies, and cooperatives processing and adding value to our products, or just by consolidating our produce and inputs to reduce transaction costs and benefit from bulk buying and selling, or directly selling to consumers, which sometimes are, our, are the members themselves. We see that cooperatives, when there is professional management and dedicated leadership, are able to share profits through dividends and patronage refunds, are able to service our members according to our needs, with some cooperatives providing other services to members, such as education and providential loans, housing loans, and able to have cooperative to cooperative uh, work and partnership with other bigger businesses and companies for backward and forward linkages in the value chain. Cooperate, cooperatives operate on the principle of volunteerism, of participative democracy, of wealth sharing, of cooperation and concern for others, and thus cooperatives are very good exercise for leadership, accountability, responsiveness, and participation. Third, empowerment of the agency of farmers. Farmers have been seen as passive beneficiaries or just waiting for dole outs, but farmers, when organized and capacities for action and reflection are harnessed, are solution providers and can help shape the future we want in our farms, in our communities, and in our countries. And that is what farmers' organizations do. With these three main contributions, these, in a sense, are our expectations. First, we need from our governments an enabling environment, policies that secure our rights to natural resources, mainly lands, waters, forests, and seeds, policies that incentivize transition to agroecological approaches, to cooperative endeavors, to ecosystem restoration, to strengthening domestic and regional market. Policies and programs that will promote the agency of family farmers, especially the women and young farmers, so that they get equal rights and equitable opportunities and spaces to grow to their fullest potential. Second, an inclusive governance. Family farmers are more and more organized, and the design of implementation of national and regional plans for the United Nations decade of family farming with family farmers organizations as a key partner with youth and women empowerment as cross-cutting pillars will be a key strategy to have a multi-stakeholder partnership for just to say that's one and a, that's five and a yes. half minutes if you could yes. come to a conclusion thank i you. will come to a close thank you david uh, so the undff will unleash the potentials of family farmers in the world third is the long-term adequate financing directed to farmers through their organizations and cooperatives so that we will be empowered to service our own members. Family Farmers for Healthy People and Planet, that is our commitment. And if we are ably supported, we know that we can help achieve the sustainable development goals through an empowering food systems. Looking forward to work together as equal partners. Thank you for your attention. What a splendid, splendid presentation. Thank you for really picking out the three big areas. Thank you for identifying why it is so important for farmers, particularly family farmers, to be part of this journey. Thank you for your personal leadership as a member of the advisory committee, of course, uh, with others and or with your uh, real effort to get more and more farming organizations involved. Uh, to both Elizabeth and Estrella, uh, we are privileged actually to be receiving these inputs. And I'll make one more comment once we've heard from our third presenter about the dialogue findings, that is, Teo de Jaeger, the president of the World Farmers Organization. Thank you, as always, Teo, for being with us. You have the floor now. Thank you so much, David. I want to share with you the sincere thank you to both Esther and Elizabeth for the way they are covering the interests of the farmers on the, the various continents, and they've done such a splendid job, they left me very little to say. Thank you also to you, David, who 
are always there where the farmers gather to discuss the food systems. And as you have experienced yourself, we were really overwhelmed by the significance of the, the debates over the last week, especially Thursday and Friday, when farmers from across the globe um, got together to bring the authentic voice of the producers into these dialogues. Um, we, we said to each other, it is so significant, we need to do it more often. We, we, we do not need to stop when the food system settlement um, happens. We say to each other that the, the strength of this constituency is much more than its sheer numbers. The fact that they are about 1.6 billion producers who we represent in the farmers' organizations. It's also how wide the footprint of these producers are. They are scattered across all the six continents where farming is done. But the strongest um, part of it is actually in the dialogue. In the fact that we communicate with each other, that we share experiences and aspirations and dreams, the, the communication is most probably what's going to move the horizons. We are extremely excited to have this voice around the table. It is only over the last four or five years that the authentic voice of the farmers are heard in the multilateral discussions on food systems and value chains. Um, but it's, it's more than that we need. We, we also need to be mainstreamed in these processes and to give content to that voice. But most of all, we are excited to have farmers organizations talking for farmers, bringing the real farmers voice with mandated positions. We, we, we can put out a position knowing that we will be held responsible and accountable to those who asked us to represent their voices. Of course, it's not only plain sailing. There are many things which um, we are concerned about. And one of the things which we keep on flagging is the important of, importance of the voice of science in these debates. We, science can never be only one more voice in the noise. Um, the solutions which are not science-based will simply not be lasting. We are a bit concerned about the temptation to take shortcuts as if it is possible to bring simple answers to the most difficult questions about our food systems. It is so important to have this debate right now when humankind came to a point in its history where more of us live in cities than in rural areas. And it can only be so because there are still enough of us who are producers. But in, in our value systems, we need to ensure that there is fairness, especially in the distribution of risk and reward, because as Agnes have rightfully said, agriculture for us is a business, it's our livelihoods. There must be a decent living for every producer. There is such a lot we can do better, and we see it in our exchanges in climate makers, where farmers can learn from other farmers how to do things better and improve all the time. And farmers put a lot of faith in technology to help us to get there. The one commitment which we firmly bring to the table and on which all farmers across the globe have consensus is that we are committed to leave every piece of this planet which has been entrusted for such a short span of its lifetime to us. We are committed to leave it to the next generation in a better condition than what we got it. Thank you, David. Teo, thanks very much indeed. Everybody, what Teo just mentioned, uh, we are committed to leaving the planet in a better state for the next generation than we found it ourselves, is being uh, mentioned by some as the, the golden rule. It's always to make something better for those who come. Thank you, uh, Teo, for saying that the authentic voice of farmers is coming into the summit, but now you want not just to be there to speak, you want to be there to be heard because you have content to bring. 
and you have the real voice of farmers mandated in your organizations. And so, as well as thanking all three of you, Elizabeth, Estrella, and Teo, I'd also like to give a very big shout out to those who've made it possible for you to get these independent dialogues involving producers going so strongly. Uh, the organization that I know about being involved is IFAD or IPAD, but I know that there will be many, many others who've worked hard over the last few months to try to make it possible for farmers to be heard. I think we've had a great sense in these three comments uh, on what farmers, fishers, pastoralists and other producers are thinking, are struggling with and are willing to commit towards when it comes to food systems transformation. Now we're going to move into moderated breakout discussions. We're going to have six breakouts and they're going to each focus on the following key questions. Number one, what are producers ready to commit to? Number two, what would producers like to see others commit to? What do producers need to see the world stop? doing and what is missing in the food systems summit so just to have it in the back of your mind commitments by the producers commitments by others what we should stop doing and what's missing from the summit you'll be automatically identified to one breakout room discussions in your break breakout rooms as always happen under Chatham House rules. We don't tweet about what people say. We don't even talk about it because people need to be able to say what they want to say without fear of any retribution. Breakout rules will be given five minutes of ice breaking time to be followed by 45 minutes of discussion. Gives us a total of 50 minutes. Organizers will send a pop-up message, pop message to all rooms five minutes before the closing plenary. Participants will be automatically directed to the closing plenary and will be hearing from the rapporteur of each group at the closing plenary. The rapporteurs will be given about two minutes to report back uh, because we want to try to make sure that we get you all off on time and then there'll be a five minute wrap up and closing remarks. Now, the important thing about this is really that the producers get to speak with each other and get to reflect on the four questions I've identified. The facilitators you'll find in the groups, and I'd like to invite the conveners now to send participants to the groups. And when the people come into their groups, facilitators, please pick up just remember, you've only got 50 minutes. We will stop at uh, 13, uh, 35 European time for the feedback. Okay, let's give it a go now. I'll try to keep close to you through this period, uh, just in case there are any problems. Uh, could we please now send people to the breakout rooms? Thank you. Or the way in which the groups went i was so impressed and it's lovely to be with you all i mean this is a very special kind of dialogue it's very much working with the producers and focusing on what the producer contribution is uh yeah and um, it says here my video is on i hope you can see me uh so i'm now going to go for the feedback session and um, we were really keen that we can get as much possible in the feedback. Uh, we've had challenges, inspirations and commitments, as well as some suggestions on urgent need for systemic changes. And uh, uh, I'm now going to invite the facilitator or the designated reporter from each group to report back. 
I am going to try to get you to do it in uh, uh, just over two minutes. Otherwise, we don't we won't be able to 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 do it properly. So let us see how it goes. I'm switching on my timer and uh, could group one facilitator possibly report back now concentrating on the feelings and uh, the optimism or pessimism that came out of it. Uh, you have the floor starting now, group one. Okay, thank you very much, David. And we had a uh, fruitful discussion in breakout group one. So in general, um, for the first question about what the producers are, commit, are committed to do, they commit to doing better. Essentially that, committed to doing better and ensuring that the farm, the environment uh, that they will live for the next generation is even better than the situation or the condition of the environment when they entered it. So they are willing to work in partnership with different um, institutions and government entities and other stakeholders in order to max, uh, in order to produce the need, uh, produce safe, healthy, and nutritious food with the least amount of impact to that environment. In terms of what they want, other. Uh, stakeholders to do. They want um, other stakeholders to see uh, farmers as equals, you know, equals, um, uh, uh, equals, um, equals in partnership and that um, um, also they want other sectors to share technology and good expertise for them to be able to um, commit to their role in producing safe and nutritious food. Um, they want government to put more resources to infrastructure, may it be road, power, digital, and for development agents to um, acknowledge or recognize indigenous knowledge systems when it comes to agriculture. There's also a need for stakeholders to provide, to commit to providing reliable data that farmers can use in decision making when it comes to agricultural production. In terms of what producers want the world to stop doing, they want to, they want other uh, stakeholders to stop treating pr producers as beneficiaries or victims. They want to be equal partners. Um, they want the world to stop discounting farmer knowledge and consider them as co-creators of knowledge instead. They want to stop stop the world from using a one size fit all approach, a top-down approach to smallholder development, and look at things at a holistic uh, level. And um, lastly, to stop taking away biodiversity and genetics uh, from the farmers. So for the last question on what is missing on the food system, they say that there lacks involvement of local transporters or the logistics sector, which plays an important role in the system. And there, is, there needs to be um, a defined um, pathway to the action that will happen after this discussion. So after we've written all of the reports, the document, what are the tangible actions that will be uh, taken? So that's it for my group. Apologies if I very will not good. fully cover everything. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much, Mylene. That was... Uh about three minutes and it was a really comprehensive report back uh, and I think everyone hold uh, those points and we will see how the other groups build on uh, or in any way conflict with those to build up to establish a, a, a common synthetic picture. It's coming well. Now is it Benito Eliassi or somebody else who's going to report back from the second group please? Group two. Somebody else. You have the floor starting now. Three minutes. Thank you. I believe that might be my my group, David. Clarence here. Yeah. I think I'm in. Okay, group two. that's fine. Group two. Off you go, Clarence. You have the floor. Right Thank on, you the, very on much. the first on the first question. I must say that we had a very um, high level of participation and excellent moderator. We had diversity in terms of region and diversity in terms of experience and expertise. On the first question, we have five offers being made. Four relate to the SDG goals: uh, increase in renewable energy on the farms, a greater use of eco-friendly climate smart technologies, 
uh, sustainable farming, increase in for sustainable farming on the on the farms, and overall support for the SDG goals. The one that is outside of that is uh, a reference by Italy to their publication, United in the Food, and the need to emphasize working as a system, which is much more than working as along the value chain line. The second one, second question, gave us seven suggestions. What would we like to see others commit to? A support across the value chain. Um, the first one, one that we hear a lot of times, the second one, enabling policies from the government to the compensation for ecosystem services, which came from India. Very interesting that if the farmers are doing work to enrich the soil, to improve the sustainability in terms of soil management, then there should be some sort of reward for doing that. Access to information, very important. We always have here about access to money and access to other resources. Um, access to inter information to enable farmers to make the appropriate decisions. Um, we'd like to see, in, in particular, the governments commit to what I call predictability, predictability of markets for primary production, pricing, guaranteed pricing in some cases, funding. Uh, and we also talked about farming SMEs and the end support across the value chain in relation to what we want uh, others to commit. In relation to the third question, there were five recommendations. What should the world stop doing? Worlds should stop doing, governments in particular should stop imposing unworkable policies on producers and have greater input on the, from producers in terms of what is likely to work. Governments should be open to different systems and stop imposing one size fit all systems, particularly coming out of the summit. It should stop supporting unhealthy foods and create that enabling environment for, for healthy foods and healthy patterns of consumption to take precedent. Again, the one size fit all in terms of generic policies was the, was the use, and I referred previously to India, the issue of tribal areas and tribal groups and, and people with specific needs and specific backgrounds. Um, the, whole, the whole discussion on polycrop versus mon monocrop. And the last point on that one, stop ignoring organized farmers. You would think that governments would like to work with strong farmers organization. Some persons express the view that government actually ignore organized farmers because they see them in some cases as a threat. And in the fourth, on the fourth question, there were six, six areas identified in terms of what is missing. From Vijay in India, we, we heard that there is a sense of emergency that is missing, I like the word, use of the word emergency and not urgency. Uh, there is need to take stock of what is taking place around the world and particularly in the context of climate change. Uh, the third point is that we should emphasize that food is the food producers are the oxygen in our existence. I, I particularly like that point and we should uh, continue to give more and more priority not only to food producers, farmers, but to the views of farmers. We should emphasize that there is not one solution um, we should have regional solutions and in some cases you national come to a solutions. Close now, please close. And Thank the you. last one is on the issue of inclusivity and making sure that all groups are represented and there's a reference to the low representation of, of governments in the in this process. And the last one quickly because I like it, uh, farmers should be more than participants. Farmers should be in the summit as decision makers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, um, uh, now, could we quickly go to uh, Fatma Ben Rejeb to talk about the third group? Fatma, three minutes starting now. Uh, yes, it's Debbie who is going to report for the third group. Debbie. Good morning. I think um, at this point we've we've already heard a lot of things. Um, but our group um, and question number one committing to, um, we need to recognize that all sides of farmers are contributing daily to sustainability. And that um, <clears throat> in question two, we want others to recognize the importance of all sizes of farmers, including smallholders and the value that they contribute to science. And we also want to make sure everybody um, sees how science is so important in all of this, that our solutions need to be based in, in science. 
um, question three and what we want others to stop doing. We want others, um, we don't want, it was brought up several different times, blaming ag as a problem. We want others to see ag <clears throat> as a solution to the, to the problems, a solution to climate change. Um, we also want to stop pitting um, different types of systems against others, that all systems of agriculture, um, whether it be organic um, production, traditional, whatever it's called, that we need to recognize the value of all the systems um, that we have available. Um, we also want to stop um, being against livestock production. We need to recognize it um, as it's important for nutrition, economics, and their impact on sequestering carbon. And what do we see is missing? Um, we need to get the right visibility at the summit for farmers and elevate their role. Um, and I'm looking, um, the missing is also the holistic approach. Everybody needs to, um, to look at the systems as a whole and not individually. And I think if um, Juan was also gonna maybe contribute here. Thank you very much. Super, I'm grateful to you actually for noting that there's already been quite a lot of conversation, Debbie. So you were uh, limited and you added on, makes my life much easier. And by the way, we're developing a very rich, very rich set of uh, outcomes. So thank you. To group four in my uh, list, it says Louisa Volpe, but Louisa, you might want to bring somebody else in to talk yes, about group be, four. It would be David Cotton from IDF okay. reporting for group four. Thank you, Louisa. Thank you, Louisa. Um, just really to add on again, David, to the comments that have already uh, come out. Some other things that we were thinking farmers should or we would commit to as producers is more efficiency in food production and getting closer to the consumer again. There seems to be more of a, a gap between the farmer and the consumer, which has been growing and we need to get that back in line. And that is partly through responding to market demand. Um, the other thing is to commit to net zero by 2050, which a lot of a lot of producers around the world are already there or heading towards net zero in big time now. So that is one that we are committing to and continuously to commit to produce more with less, which is something that farmers have been very good at throughout the centuries and continue to do so. Um, what others should commit to, uh, there was, um, the key about farmer access to finance, but in truth, truth, if it's a fair market reward for what we produce, then the access to finance is easier because um, there is, we're earning more from what we produce in the first place. So that was one thing there. The other thing was to commit to regular policy review on food production uh, and not to be just left as an afterthought and to prioritize local sourcing. The other thing to commit to was to uh, to have no gender bias, so equal rights for all farmers, regardless of gender. As regards what to stop, I think one of the things that um, promotion of fake foods, uh, we as farmers produce food to feed, feed the masses and actually promotion of fake foods is something that uh, processed fake foods are not real food at the end of the day. And as was mentioned earlier, stop demonizing farmers as an environmental hazard when farmers are the solution, not the problem. And as regards what's missing, uh, the feeling is that there is a lot of representation at the Food System Summit, but is it actually from the active grassroots? Is it, um, or is it the organized, ex loads of organizations representing loads of interested parties, but is it the active grassroots of food production? and that the origin of all food and real food should be highlighted. And those are, those are from group four, uh, over and above what was already commented on. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'm most impressed. And, uh, uh, but with the way that the whole thing is coming together, and um, we will probably not have a chance to have detailed discussions, but I will be asking Ishmael Sunga and uh, Vijay Kumar to give comments on what they've heard. Uh, and uh, Ishmael uh, and Vijay, if you're ready, that would be very, very good. But before you come in, it's Ajay Veer Jakar, facilitator of the fifth group, 
either himself reporting or somebody else. Ajay, I can see you. You have the floor. Thank you. I think Ajay has oh, passed. Uh, uh, Ajay, you're alive. Yes, yes. Uh, David, it's Carl here. I'm going to report for, for Group 5 on behalf okay. of, of Ajay and the team. I'll avoid repetition. And we also had a fascinating conversation um, on question one. There was commitment around natural farming and uh, agroecological approaches, um, a commitment to uh, uh, re-energizing and, and re-incentivizing youth engagement in agriculture. There was lots of comments around the creativity of farmers, um, the diversity within farming systems and how positive that is. Um, and and uh, question two, uh, there, was, there were comments around um, legal assistance, um, enabling environments, so government support to farmers organizations. There was quite a lot of comment around um, the need for farmers to be organized and their collective uh, uh, power. Um, there was one example on per participatory farmer guarantee scheme, for example, from the Pacific, which was fascinating. Uh, question three, um, Yes, uh, repeated already. Stop the, uh, the the top down dictation. Uh, stop blaming farmers. Um, question four was was to consider trade offs more, um, and and also to understand animal and plant protein, um, to understand the nuanced value of technology, and then a couple of other general observations, if I may, David, was 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 just this a little anxiety around the transition narrative that something has to change everywhere or that everything has to change. I think for the farmers spoke eloquently about how they have capacity and creativity. And in particular, a tribal uh, group representative mentioned how important it is to um, engage farmers in research and, and, and the participatory farmer led uh, research agenda. Um, and that's that's it. There's lots more, but we've taken the notes. David, back to you. Thank you. So everybody, it, life at the moment in preparing for the summit is quite tricky. We have limited interpretation capacity, lots and lots of events. There's a civil society forum, as many of you know, starting in nine minutes. Our generous and kind interpreters have left uh, on your behalf. Uh, I'd like just to thank them and I will find a way to thank them later. Uh, we will work without interpretation. We're super tight on time. We have to stop on time. There was a sixth group. Did the sixth group wish to report, please? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks, David. I'm going to be reporting on behalf of group six. Yeah, for the, for the commitments, the farmers, farmers yeah, you have, to have agreed to continue fast. working. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, the farmers have continued, I mean, have, have continued to work together in making sure that the food systems are sustainable. And equally, they want to engage more young people, persons with disabilities and women in the whole process. And equally, ensuring that there's continued production, high production with low cost or minimum resources to making sure that it is really attractive and equally mindful to all the stakeholders. And then the issue of uh, networking, there's going to be networking. Network, networking was actually came out with other family farmers. And uh, we equally had a component of uh, continuous knowledge sharing and management, as well as lobbying for more resources, financial resources. And uh, we, we equally committed to, to enhance technology and share among the family farmers. Later on, we decided to add more to, uh, to work more towards having a free farm, farming without greenhouse emissions, meaning that free fertilizers or less chemicals being used to produce more. And then looking at some of the issues we do not want to see happen, uh, want to see happen, want to see happen, want to see, want to get the government support policy framework for the farmers, we want to ensure that policy is actually high on the score, and equally making sure that the nature-based solutions and this sustainability, sustainable production is scaled up among the whole process value chain. And equally, we want to see a robust consum con consumer and environmental education across the entire value chain and the process. We want to see more support, financial resources being allocated 
and looking at the CARE process where 10% needs to be allocated to farmers want to see that happen as well, and the government engagements. And then traditional knowledge and food systems should be equally, equally vital. Likewise, livestock and fisheries should be highly taken into consideration. And furthermore, the rights of women in certain member states have actually been tempered with, so we want to see that happen, we want the rights of women to be respected. Now, moving forward, we some of the issues, some of the aspects that have been missing, we, we thought of, we thought of uh, the invest international trade, the international trade, how do we ensure that standard is actually highly um, mainstreamed in the whole food system? For example, we equally thought of uh, investment, innovation, and technology should equally be in included in the whole summit process for us to have a more, more transformed food system. And then the, as the, the, the issue of young people, rural youth and rural men actually came up again that they should be brought at the table. And equally, personally, with disability because of the issue of communication. Yeah. And uh, one of the very good things we found that was equally mindful was to be taken care of. We see that the summit process is actually taking in account to consideration the national implementation plans of the member states. Okay, we have six minutes left, everybody. Divine, can you bring it to a close, please? Divine, is that the finish of your part, please? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I got that. That's very good. So now we have, I, I'm going to invite um, uh, two colleagues to give us their uh, reaction to what they've heard, summarize our discussion and highlight our way ahead. You have two minutes each. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I will actually tell you when your two minutes are up. So, uh, could we invite, um, first of all, uh, Ishmael Sunga, please? You have the floor now. Thanks, David. Um, a, a rich mixture of um, very insightful conversations, which I might be able to sum up in a very few words. What I heard from the discussions and the feedback is that our farmers are crying out aloud for a future system that is built on fundamental values and principles and ethics that relates to equity, that re relates to partnerships, that relates to respect, that is about responsibility, that is about empathy, that is about openness, that is about accountability. If we sort out that principle-based system, we are all in for the good future a future that ensures that there is uh, proper and um, uh, respect and uh, by all the different actors and playing in unison. And I think that's what the farmers are crying aloud for. They want to take their responsibility in that uh, configuration, but they are equally expecting all the other ecosystem players to do the same. Uh, I think the challenge for us is how to really bring it all together and move within that framework that, in my view, is very, very positive, very futuristic, and uh, very good-hearted. Uh, over to you, David, before you stop me. <laughs> you are great, and I'm not going to, because you were absolutely beautiful. And I, I mean, everybody, hold those words of Ishmael. This is so, so clear. This community of producers actually have the answers. And it's been so lovely to hear this come through. Let's see what Vijay Kumar has to say about this. Vijay, you have the floor as well. Vijay, there you are. I think you may have to come off mute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, I think Ishmael has really said it so well. And there's not much for me to say, but thank the great insights from different groups. And I just want to go by what Esther started. She said, agroecology, empowerment, cooperation. I think that's the heart of what is required to set right a system where farmers are in deep distress and neither are the consumers happy. I also heard farmers are the solution, but I want to emphasize perhaps for us to survive as a 
human society, farmers may be the only solution. So how do we help farmers to save humanity? So it's not for the farmer's sake, it's for the whole society that everybody, governments, uh, businesses, finances need to come together to enable farmers to discharge their duty, to discharge. And I also see a very grave emergency and COVID has thrown it up that lack of nutritious food is again the cause of uh, great uh, public uh, you know, health disorders. So I think somewhere nutritious food, production of nutritious food has to be at the center of what we are doing. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, more than possible with the technologies that we have and with the kind of heroes that we have among the producers. Uh, thank you, David. It was a very exciting and a very inspiring uh, session. And I want to thank all the farm producers across the world and thank you for uh, leading us so well. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Vijay. Everybody, we have about 45 seconds left. Here are five points you might like to consider. One, farmers are the solution to the global food systems emergency. They offer nutrition, they care for the environment. Two, farmers have diverse talents and abilities. They are all to be engaged. Number three, there is a multiplicity of farming systems as part of the multiplicity of food systems. They should be recognized and valued. Fourth, farmers need fair treatment by everybody, including, of course, by governments and by businesses that buy their food. And governments need to act in the interests of farmers. And fifth, let us work for farmers to be appreciated for who they are. As Vijay said, they may be the people with the only tools with which to respond to many of the emergencies that are faced at the moment. I think farming will not be the same after this summit. It will leap into a new orbit of importance. It is the efforts of yourselves and your organizations over many months and years that have been so important. I salute and recognize you all. I'd like to give particular thanks to all who've been involved in putting this together, together particularly the co-sponsoring organizations. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence here of the Committee on World Food Security, particularly the chair of the Committee on World Food Security. Thank you for being with us, Tanawat. But everybody, the, from the people who started us off, the people who've helped us with the groups, the people who've helped with the report back, just real appreciation. This has been an incredibly rich period. Best wishes and thanks. Uh, the chair of the CFS would like to make a last word. You have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nevero. I think this uh, dialogue today is a good opportunity to hear the voice of our farmers, producers, which actually, as you know, that at the CFS, as a multi-stakeholders, we really are aware of the issues of uh, the voice of our farmers, producers, and others uh, can be heard. And that's why I think it's a good time. Uh, and also it's a good role of uh, the UN Food System Summit to hear the voice of our farmers and producers. Thank you very much. Everybody. Big rush, off we go to the next. But remember, farmers are here. And they're not going away. Thank you all. Bye-bye.